fans, we welcome you back to our way too early football show. Got a little bit more than football for you today. Christian Pedersen with San Diego Prep Insider. I am joined by Bodie, the neckbeard De Silva from Scorebook Live. He's the Scorebook Live reporter for the San Diego CIF section. Scorebook Live is the official digital partner of the CIF. We are joined by Noah Laxina wearing perhaps the perfect shirt because he is truly our Superman. Uh, That's Noah hilarious. Laxina comes to us on behalf of himself. He is he is not with anybody. Uh, Tommy Morris, the final one. Tommy Morris, what do we got on? I today? thought I had the perfect shirt. I thought got? we were going to talk about 2K today, so I wore my um, NBA Jam Ooh. fake shirt. Very nice. Well, yeah, we, we are going to talk about 2K. Um, we've got some 2K to talk about because that could potentially be an eSport. Later on in the show, we will discuss uh, – all sorts of all the remaining South Bay football teams that we have not gotten to yet on our way to early football previews, as well as uh, some reaction to the MLB draft. But yes, Tommy, you mentioned 2K. So the Cali Cup just concluded last week. CIF State put on a great esports event this year. Everything got messed with a little bit in the spring season because no spring sports due to the COVID nineteen pandemic, but. Esports ends up pulling off an event at the very end of the school year, uh, kind of shining some light on things to come. And I've heard rumors through the grapevine that potentially 2K could become an esports. So, guys, I wanted to get some reaction from the room and just maybe just run through the knowing nothing beyond that it is a possibility, run through some options and hypotheticals of what you think the dopest version of that would look like. No, I see you hyping up the crowd. Tommy, you've got the right shirt. Bodie, I'm assuming you want to talk last about this. So uh, Tommy <laughs> or Noah, whichever one of you want to address this first, please, let's hear your reaction. I have the right answer. I have the right answer. So we're in a situation right now where we don't know what's going to happen with sports because of COVID, but video games for all intents and purposes are safe because you're either in your own home or you're with your teammates at your school in like confined environments you're not really sharing germs and stuff like that if potentially there were some fall sports that either got pushed back or canceled seems like a pretty good alternative right if, if we have a couple of weeks without football maybe a couple of madden games with some schools against each other you know you, you pick your best four guys or whatever throw them all out there on the field versus the other school's best four guys I mean, I, I do think we're gonna have football season so i'm not trying to scare people but I think this would be an awesome thing for, for CIF to do. And I'm not putting pressure on you guys up in Sacramento, but I think it'd be an awesome thing for them to do to be able to kind of remedy a little bit. You see, we saw it with the pro leagues, right? We saw NBA trying to do some 2K stuff on ESPN. I don't think it's that far off. All these kids play the games anyway. And I don't know why. I, I mean, I, I kind of get it, but I don't really get it. Kids like watching other kids play. So it seems like a pretty good alternative, especially right now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the future of, of – uh sports really i mean you see a lot of people invested in the esports i think um there's a couple different scenarios you could do a lot in 2k a, a very popular uh, game is my career and, and you create your own player you could be you could create any position and you know you just do five players from one school who created their own players versus five players in another school you could be, and then you could have a bench too so you know adds more possibilities another thing too it's called uh my team where you get you have to do certain challenges to get new cards, and then you could have Michael Jordan on your team with LeBron on your team. So there's different, there's definitely different options. Um, I think it's you know with how popular it is, it, it's going to get a lot of attention, and um, it's it's something to be excited about. It's a it's a new little twist. We're in it's the modern day it's the modern day sport. So, I mean, if it was around when I was in high school, I would definitely do my best to be captain of the two K team. That would be that'd be that'd be beautiful, but. I'm excited to see what what they do with this, and um, I would I would I want to tune in and cover that. That'd be exciting to cover. I get immediately terrified of how to vote on first team all 2K, um, not knowing how how one player would be. I want to be 2K player of the year. Yeah, we've already heard enough feelings with uh, the all CIF voting for other sports, uh, let alone an all 2K voting. Um, so what would you want to see this look like, Noah, in terms of uh, – I, I think that it, it's fair to say that the playing field would be pretty even, so you wouldn't necessarily want to do an open division, Division One, Two. Do you keep the old alignments kind of where your school was just for other sports anyway? That's where you are? Or everybody go into one pool, San Diego wide? How would you guys want to see this actually formatted? I don't think you have to get rid of divisions because – these games all have rankings in them, right? So the kids are going to have their 
if it's my player, like Noah's saying, the player's going to have a rating. So you don't want some kids with 99 overall everything's playing against kids with 62s. So you could easily put them in a division. That, it's not fun. Don't, don't make fun you. of my player, Noah. Don't make fun of my player, Noah. All right? We're struggling over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know how to do a lot of things in that game. But you, it naturally kind of lends itself to making divisions because you already have a, a built-in ranking. So you don't need to even argue over who should be where. It's just kind of set. So I think it, it, it does do divisions on its own. So I think that'd be a nice little way to uh, – you, you could have the 60 division, the 70 division, the 80 division, the 90 division. Pretty easy. Uh, yeah, I, I think if you, go by div- if you go by divisions, if you go by, like, school population, like how, how we used to do that, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea just because it gives everybody an opportunity – that first year, like, okay, if I just work on my player, then we're going to go, we're going to win. And then everyone sees how, how good they are. And then after a couple, a couple seasons, then you're like, okay, this school for some reason breeds the best 2K players and these, this school. And then you could even it out. But I think in the beginning, giving everybody that shot, giving those multiple champions is going to, it's going to put some extra boost into the sport, some nitrous into the sport and get it really going and accelerating into a, a path zone. So give get get the get the players some more get the divisions, get some more winners and really pump that sport into into a really good direction moving forward. Cody De Silva, any uh, anything to add to this discussion? Yeah, I mean, I obviously I I play myself, but um, I, I like that there's big popular games among the big three sports. So whether maybe you're a baseball guy, you can play the show, and maybe Madden's your thing. Obviously, we wish college football was back. Uh, I think obviously 2K would be the best format for all of it, just with the the different ways they have for you to play right now. Whether it's making your own team, your own player, any of that. But uh, I, I'm I'm all for it. I think it'd be a, a big positive. Uh, Bodie, are you willing to w- – w- how confident are you willing to say that the Prep Insider team could be, knowing that you play and, and our discussions before the show with Noah, Tommy's shirt, and my baseball-centric mind, how do you think the four of us fare as a 2K team? <laughs> 2K, I'm going to need to go back and work on my skills. I've been more on the show recently. But, um, yeah, I, we could compete. I, I have trust in Noah there. Hey, hey, the good thing about 2K is we could all create specific people. So, say, Bodie, I'm like, Bodie, you're just going to be a straight shooter. You're going to sit in the <laughs> corner and you just got to practice your timing, how fast you press the square button. Tommy, you just go out and play defense. Christian, you just go out and play make it. And then I can just take care of the rest of it. We, we'd be a good – I think we'd be a good team. I think it wouldn't be bad. So, Noah sent us a video of some of his friends playing in the championship game of whatever league they're in. So, then I – Fired to go play my first ever online game and at first I was killing him. I'm like this is so easy like I, I was winning like eight to six this guy was getting all frustrated and pausing it I ended up losing I think like 60 to 20 I don't know I couldn't score anymore it was it was bad so I, I don't know I, maybe I'm terrible we'll see I, I, I thought I was fine but I, I could not score it in my life the guy that the guy that you played, he was just sitting back, and then when he saw in the in the beginning you were winning, he sat up in his chair and he was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna make sure he has a rough time today." Well, he was doing this BS thing where he, because he was a Lakers, which of course is unfair already, but he would put LeBron in weird positions so that I would have a weird person guarding him. So you're constantly yeah. trying to like switch who the per, and I just didn't care anymore at that point. So I, it wasn't that important to me. I wasn't gonna pause the game every three seconds to go switch the the assignment. So <laughs> that's how he wants to win. That's how he wants to win. But I found a little bit <laughs> all i gotta say is board man gets paid so i'll take the uh, i'll take all the re I'll, I'll focus on all the rebounding um guys let's talk about a little bit way too early football we are recording this show on thursday uh potentially there's announcements coming out later today following the show about new updated timelines and guidelines for the return to play so they're could potentially be a lot of out of date information, it, it, even you know hours after this is posted. But let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more teams down in the South Bay that we haven't talked about. Oh, I know it's way too early. We don't know transfers. We don't know how this is all going to work out. If it's a full season or not. This isn't league previews. This is just us trying to fill some time and talk some football. So, uh, any, uh, Bodie, we'll, we started with you last on the basketball discussion. So we will start with you first. Uh, which of your squads would you like to talk about? Yeah, I'll go with Montgomery first, um, a team that last year was 9-2, and two, uh, and I expect to have a lot of the same success this year. They went 3-0 and in league. 
Um, but a player that I think is really going to have a big breakout season, Isaiah King, 6'4", uh, has picked up a couple recent offers uh, so far during the whole quarantine off season, And um, they have just a lot of returning players overall. Uh, Alexander Dixie's back at quarterback. Uh, he also led the team in rushing last year. Um, I just think that with what they were able to do last year, I think they can keep building and um, a team that I expect to see a, make a deep playoff run. Noah Laxina, you got a pair of squads. Which one would you like to talk about first? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Sweetwater first. Too high? Um, so Sweetwater. Yeah, too so high. Yeah, so Seawater, you know, they're going to they're, they're gonna have a – it's going to be a tough year for them, but they do have a bright spot, Mario Padilla. He was a sophomore. He had over 700 yards rushing uh, last season. So, you know, he could carry on that. They could really be a ground-and-pound centric team with him. He's a big guy, about 190. So, you know, they, they find another guy who could anchor the defense, and I think that could be a little, a little two-man punch on offense and defense. And look for Sweetwater – to surprise some teams this year. Tommy Morris, floor is yours. I'll go with the CP cast Trojans guy I want to talk about. Obviously, he's got to be Eric Hernandez. I mean, these dude's stats last year were ridiculous. 1,700 yards, averaging 10.7 yards a carry, 25 touchdowns. He gets overlooked a little bit because of his size. He will have an opportunity first game of the season. This is a big game for the whole school in general to prove that. Size does not matter in his case. They're playing RBV, a bigger school, so he'll have a chance to prove himself there, as well as the whole Castle Park team, because while they were 11-2, and two, they, they kind of took a step down as far as strength of schedule, so this will be a good test for them early on. Ramon Cabal is their leading tackler. He's also probably going to get a lot of carries. He's another guy to look out for for them. They're going to have to replace um, quarterback, but it won't really matter, because last year they, they threw the ball 78 times and they ran over 500 times. So this is going to be a team that's going to run the ball. They're a very good running team. And I like, like teams that can run the ball, control the, the, the tempo of the game. It's a lot like in basketball when you play a team that plays like the Princeton offense and they slow it down and they limit the possessions and they get good quality possessions every time. Very similar with Castle Park on offense. They're going to limit the possessions you get. They're going to have good possessions themselves. So you can't afford to make a mistake when you play them. I like them this year too. Definitely also got to give a shout out uh, anytime we talk about Castle Park right now to – Coach of the year, Chris Livesey, the head coach of the Castle Park Trojans, winning that award last year. Um, definitely seems like there are some shifting tides this year in the South Bay. One of those is at Mar Vista. We got a new head coach this year. Curtis Mays takes over after Tyler Arciaga moves on from the job last year. Oh, hey, shout out to Coach Mays. Good, uh, good, good friend of mine, Coach Mays. Well, I gave you the, I, I took the wrong squads then. No, you should have jumped up and uh, and and taken over this one. Uh, Curtis May's first year there. Always some change when there's a, a, a changing of the guards, a new head coach coming in. But at the same time, you feel like maybe is he at a disadvantage right now, not being able to have had spring ball with his team. What's you know how short is the implementation time going to have to be to get up to speed on this offense? I like though that last year looking at it. Para wins in league, so you know that when it comes down to the back end of the schedule, they'll be able to have the skill level to get it done in league and stay competitive. You, you just hope that that, uh, that learning curve is pretty quick. Returning a decent amount of players from last year, so I, I think that this is going to be a team that it wouldn't – if this is a 10-game season, it wouldn't surprise me if they're 5-5, five and five, kind of surprise some people. And, and you know, maybe uh, – Bank on Curtis Mays making playoff appearance his first year as the uh, the head coach of the Mar Vista Mariners. Before we get to our second round of teams, the MLB draft is underway. And Bodie De Silva, I wanted to get some of your – I mean, I want to get the rules reaction, but Bodie, as part of your coverage for Storebook Live, uh, you've been writing extensively about San Diego's ties to the draft and just kind of the reaction and results from uh, what has gone on so far. So let's start with your uh, your reaction to the MLB draft. Yeah, obviously one of my, my favorites every year. Uh, disappointed that it was cut down to five rounds this year because I love seeing the typical 40 rounds and so many guys. You are the, the only person who watches after five rounds, Cody. <laughs> I don't think a single person watches after, after five rounds. <laughs> well, to be fair, I think typically after like round five, they cut it to audio only. So you're like in a conference call and they're, they're saying 
San Diego selects draft ID JQ3, <laughs> and you're like hoping that at, at the end they'll like say the name <laughs> and you know who it is. But um, yeah, round one, uh, Alika Williams, uh, Arizona State shortstop, who obviously played at Rancho Bernardo. Uh, another first round pick for Rancho Bernardo. I think it's their ninth uh, in school history. So uh, they just keep patting that lead there that they have on the whole state. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we're going to see a couple more guys uh, expected to be drafted later on today. Braden Oldhoff is one um, who went El Camino to Palomar and is now at Tulane. Uh, Kyle Hurt went Torrey Pines to USC. Uh, and I'll be interested to see if there's a couple uh, high school guys that, that do choose to sign, whether that's Thomas J.C. Uh, from Carlsbad or Jordan Thompson from Helix. Those are two other guys I'm, I'm looking out for that uh, may hear their name later on today. Tommy, Noah? Yeah, I'll jump in. Alika Williams, a, a kid who kind of developed a little bit of power as he went to college. In San Diego, he didn't hit any home runs in, in high school until he was a senior. He hit three out um, as a senior at RB. There were some games where he had fourth for Arizona State, which is pretty crazy considering that's one of the best teams in the country and he's the shortstop. So it's nice to see a kid like that. You know, he kind of filled out. He was six foot two, 170 pounds, kind of a string bean. I mean, we interviewed him if you go back. Um, in the archives for San Diego Prep Insider. We interviewed him when he was a senior, and he's kind of filled out a little bit. So hopefully he's going to be on the fast track to the big leagues like that. As far as the Padres picks, for those who are wondering, I mean, they're not San Diego kids, but Robert Hassel from Independence High School in Tennessee, he was one of the best players in the country as a junior. Nobody got to play his senior year, so it's really, really hard to kind of judge what would have happened as a senior. But one of the best hitters in the draft for high school, he was the first high school kid taken to number eight. It was the last, it was the latest a high school kid's ever been taken in the draft, if that makes any sense. Normally they go earlier, but given that no one played a senior year, it was harder to judge these guys. Justin Lang um, from Texas, he was signed to go to, to Dallas Baptist. The Padres took him. I think he's obviously going to go be a Padre. So we'll see with that. A little more of an unknown with him. He's a pitcher, uh, but Hassel is arguably the best bat coming out of high school going to the Padres. So we'll see him hopefully in five or six years. Noah, um, I find it interesting that you would be objecting to anybody watching later rounds of the draft, given that you're the one guy on this podcast that studies JV rosters. Uh, hey, and- I'm with Bodie on that, man. Watching the <laughs> draft, I like I, for the NFL draft. I like to watch multiple rounds. I like yeah. to watch the whole thing. So it's really interesting when you get the scouting report when those guys get drafted uh, from the analysts and stuff like that. I- I think – shout out to all those high school players that got their dingers in before the season uh, had to get canceled because it must have felt good to get at least a couple in. Um, it is kind of weird knowing that high school players got drafted They didn't, and they didn't have to play that much. Uh, they didn't play any baseball their senior year, basically. But it's cool to know how deep and how uh, much analysis that these scouts do so that way they feel comfortable taking a guy that high. But, you know, hopefully those guys work out, man. I always say Impeller we trust. So, man, I'm, I'm trusting Impeller here. I, I just think I'm, at this point, what do you do? He's made, he's made some pretty nice moves for us, for sure. We we're set not, up for he's the future, not, so. Not drafting. Here's another fun fact for the Padres. The Padres, I think if I remember this correctly, the Padres draft more high school – the ratio of high school kids to college kids drafted is the highest in the major league. So they, they generally yeah. draft high school kids. I think this is a year where you don't want to do that because, like I said earlier, you don't have a senior year. So you have really little observations on these kids. Really, really hard to judge them. I know they're all the same age, and when they're juniors, you can kind of figure it out. But it would be nice to get one more year of data points. The college kids you generally know a lot more about because they've had more years and more tape on them. So I'm a little sketched out by two high school kids, but what do I know? Two more guys quick after me. Uh, Kevin Abel, who went to Madison, had a ton of success up at Oregon State. Fortunately, got hurt, but I expect to hear his name called today. And then Casey Schmidt from uh, East Lake, who had the hey. option to get drafted out of high school, turned that down, went to San Diego State, and became an All American. So, a uh, multi position guy there. I don't know if he's a fan of me, but I'll say I'm a big fan of Casey Schmidt. <laughs> I like that kid. I enjoyed his tenure on East Lake. Um, no, I don't think you were with the show yet. Were you? That was that your first year? No, but we're the same age. Yeah, we're the same. We're the same class. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna say I, I thought was, you guys I were was like, good friends with like I'm good friends with like L J Jones from that class Ben Ramirez so I don't know Hold on hold on hold on Where were you in the Little League World Series Noah Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I just had to I had to pick up that name you dropped Um uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, That was a nice little boom 
So here's what I'm coming up with right now, just off the top of my head. We're talking about draft. Um, going back to the 2K thing, to hell with doing it by school. Let's have a draft. Let's, let's have, like, the top stars from San Diego High School Sports enter into a pool, and we'll pick, like, five team captains, and we'll have a draft. What if we created hey. them all and rated them all? I'm going to have to – I'm going to have to do some scouting and play with some of them first because you might be nice. And I know some players personally. I know players that my friend personally, he plays at uh, UCLA right now, Demetri Felton. And he's a great football player, unbelievable football player. But I whoop his butt in Madden every single time I play him. So I'm going to have to see if how it translates to the video games because it's a whole different, it's a whole different uh, environment when you, put the, when you go on the sticks. Okay, so even if CIF doesn't do that, I think we need to do that. That just sounds fun. That sounds like a fun way to kick that off. That does sound fun. Um, that does sound fun. Let's – okay, production note for when I go back and rewatch this podcast, sign up for a Twitch account, get this all organized. Um, Dude, let's do it now. Like, I, I bet we can get eight kids <laughs> who, would do, who would do a 2K tournament. I'm Deal. I'm just, I'm just creating right work for Christian. I'm just creating work for Christian. I still have a look on his face. <laughs> He's yeah. like, shut up. Well, I thought you meant literally like right now. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't I, the Zoom already lags enough. Um, I'm often just worried about pronouncing names in the next football team I have to talk about. Um, but yeah, I like where, yes, let's do this. We will organize this. Uh, if you are a player and you're still watching this, uh, any sport, DM us if you want to get in on this. Um, uh, don't know when this will happen, but we'll try and make this happen as soon as possible. We'll find a way. Gosh darn it. We'll find a way. Uh, guys, got a couple more football teams to talk about. The Southwest San Diego Raiders are my other squad. And last year to this year is going to be upward trending, I believe. They're returning a pretty decent amount of a junior cl- – entirety of their junior classes coming seniors. They didn't graduate a ton. They lost a quarterback to transfers – so it looks like it's going to be uh, Daniel Carrillo is their guy to start the year. I am not Noah Laxina. I don't dive uh, into the deep analytics of the JV rosters, so I couldn't tell you necessarily what's coming up behind him. But it looks like it's going to probably be a, a short yardage pass attempt offense. I like, though, when you look at the schedule this coming year, and again, we don't know if these are our full schedules or not, but – they got a couple of home games that I think turns them into coin flips. And then on the road at Maranatha Christian and at Hoover early in the season, I think are also both very winnable games because early on it's going to be a mixed bag for a lot of these teams. So definitely an upward trend from last year's team. Noah Laxina, you got one more squad. I believe you have uh, Bonita Vista. Bonita Vista. Yes. Yeah, so um, I think a big, a big, uh, it's going to be a big part of their success this year compared to last year. They have a, 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 lighter, a lighter schedule to start the season. So if we're able to start on time and they're able to get those games in the beginning of the season, I think they're going to have some success. Uh, yes, they're losing their number one athlete in Van, but they, um, they're a pretty they're well, big size team. Um, they have, so, yeah, they have a lot of size. Um, they have some athletes there. And I think that beginning of the season, I think they're playing – they're playing sweet. They have Sweetwater. They have some some pretty good non-league games against the other teams in Chula Vista. So if they get out to a good start, I mean, they, they they should have a pretty successful season. But I think when they get to league and they play teams like East Lake Olympian, um, I think Modern Day when they play Modern Day Otay Ranch, they're gonna have they're gonna have a, a tough time winning those games. But those games in the beginning of the season that could be the jump start to a great season for them. Tommy Morris. So we, I got Trula Vista here. I, I want to mention this kid real quick. It's Omar Perez. He's going to be the returning quarterback. He's junior last year, played the whole season, played pretty well. Uh, 17 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. He's a big kid, too. I think he's listed at around 6'2", 200 pounds. And when you watch the tape, he looks kind of like Ben Roethlisberger because he, he's got the same kind of thing where he's as big as a lineman almost. And I don't mean that in like an out-of-shape sense. I mean, like, he's just physically just a big kid. Big so he's Benny. hard to bring down. Yeah, he's – um. You know he's not he's not slow, but uh, he's not he's not gonna outrun you. So he's a typical pocket pocket passing quarterback. And last year, if you look at their stats, they 
they threw as a team 20 touchdowns and only ran for one. So they're going to throw a bunch this year. He's going to have crazy stats, I think. The record, they will. They were 2-8 and eight last year. They'll improve on that. I have no doubt in my mind. I think this will be a, a decent team that will su surprise some people down in the South Bay. And I think Omar's going to make a big name for himself. And another thing I want to add, because it's my favorite part, 3.7 GPA. Smart kid. I like the visual image of a skyscraper uh, playing quarterback. Doesn't have a ton of left-right yeah. moment uh, mobility, but is hard to take down in the pocket. Uh, oh, always a fun image. Bodie De Silva, you got one more squad for us. Yep, I've got San Ysidro. Uh They were three and eight last year. Uh, some close losses early on, and then later in the year when they had to deal with league opponents, Montgomery and Castle Park struggled, but. Uh, they return a lot, and I expect them to have a really good season. Uh, quarterback Matthew Jaime is back, uh, made his debut as a sophomore, had some success, also led the team in rushing. Uh, so him combined with Makai Jackson, who's back, he had five rushing touchdowns. Uh, and then the other big thing I'll look at is all 10 uh, touchdown receptions last year. All four of those kids who caught him are returning, uh, led by Jesse Hernandez. He was their leading receiver and had five touchdowns. So uh, I expect San Ysidro to bounce back. Now it's tough with uh, Montgomery and Castle Park and uh, in with league with them, but um, they can overcome that. Uh, and they've got a couple guys who are playing both ways and will be in big impact guys that way. So I expect them to improve on that three and eight mark. Um, Benita Vista, I think is the, the toughest game early on in their schedule, but uh, if they can win some before for that, I, I think they can get close to 500. Well, and that brings up kind of an interesting question because it feels like every year we have one team who you know they're better than their record is and you want to laud them and applaud them for being good, just having the worst timing and the worst, you know, it, you, you feel like this run that San Ysidro has been building up to a little bit over the last four or five years is this finally the validation of all the hard work and the program, you know, riding the ship from a winless season to now. And you want to say mm. like, this feels emotionally like it should be a seven or eight win team, but it might only be a five win team. Uh, but it feels like I, as long as they're in those close games in league, keeping them somewhat competitive, uh, that this is a team that could find a way to do something in the playoffs in, in a shortened season type five. I would agree. Yeah. So that is almost all of the South Bay. I appreciate you guys for uh, taking a trip down there. We will head up north or out east. Who knows where next? Um, because as we've always said, it's way too early. Somewhere. We'll be somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. And we're actually definitely headed in a 2K direction. We're probably all going to just do, uh, be, a, be a 2K show for the foreseeable future. Um, I did want to say one thing going back to Tommy covering Chua Vista. Uh, Howard Bannister, their head coach, was on our podcast series of head coaches sitting down to discuss kind of uh, race relations and what is going on in America right now and how best to, uh, to kind of help digest that mentally and emotionally with your student athletes through the process of high school sports. So definitely want to check that out. He has a lot of very interesting stuff to say. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. One more time, uh, Bodie is with us on behalf of Scorebook Live, the official digital partner of the San Diego CIF section. Noah, Tommy, everybody, deuces. We will see you guys soon. All right, guys, real quick. Thank you very much. Um, couple of questions. Uh, that...